that evening. She started doing the bones when? A few years ago. Where'd she get the bones, do you know? Dave told her where to get them. Can I ask her? What do you think? Be careful. Or the bathtubs. Be careful asking. Dave says he never met a more raw person. I saw her once on TV. The cracked teeth, the dyed red hair, the big black Reeboks? Yes, and they showed her studio. I'm supposed to go there tomorrow for the interview. Just her, in a big studio. All these objects in rows, and her on a stool, in the midst. Doing what? Working. Shit. What? I'll be interrupting the work. She'll hate me. Are you scared? I have no idea what to say to her. Say, tell me about the vests, Betty. The bones, the bathtubs. Tell me about your son dying. Ping, ping, ping. Is this an interview? She'll hate me. On TV, her hands would go up and down when they asked questions. Up and down. Grappling, sort of. She'll hate me. They just wasted away, she said. Who? I don't know. She said it a couple of times. They just wasted away. People just wasted away. Might as well not even take my notebook. They asked about the bones and she laughs. Laughs? Oh, the bones, she says. Oh, the bones meant something to me. And she laughs, or more like cause, as if... As if what? As if, I don't know what. As if anybody knows how to talk about art. Well, there's that. I'll skip the bones. They say she's kind-hearted. That makes it worse. You have to drink kind-hearted tea and split the person apart at the same time. Push, push, push. I remember she said, push, push, push. In reference to what? Some question, or working method, or what's next for you now, Betty, something like that. I'll have tea with her and leave. Or you could just sing. Sing? She's a haunted person. What makes you say that? From seeing her on TV, maybe not haunted, wrong word. What then? Non-exempt. Non-exempt from what? Life. The rest of us are exempt? Yes. News to me. Blind, deaf, dumb. Same thing. This is your theory of art. This is my theory of her awake all night worrying about little wild animals active in the dark to which the rest of us are paying not very much attention at all. I'll just have the tea and leave. Also, you could ask Dave. He used to know her. She was a patient of his once, wasn't she? Before my time. It was Darley on the desk then. Who's Darley? Don't you remember Darley? Darley was a hoot. She still calls Dave now and then to give him some lowdown. A lowdown? Lowdown on what? On the man upstairs. Upstairs where? Dave's other building. She says about ten every night he's dragging a piece of heavy furniture across the floor. Who? Dave? No, not Dave. The man upstairs. Then he drops pins or walks around in high heels or has a lot of other people walk around in high heels. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Darley's pretty sensitive to noise. Got that. You ever meet him, the man upstairs, Dave says to Darley. No, says Darley, and Dave says, someday you'll meet him. You'll say, what was it with all the pins? He'll say those weren't pins and tell you some weird inside physics fact you never heard of. Well, you can't help fantasize a man upstairs. Isabel. Where'd you get that shirt? Dave lent it to me for the dinner party. What dinner party? Last week. Lucky you. It's vintage. He said, skip the lecture. Just go to the party. Half the people do that, he says. Have any fun. I end up talking to this Berlin journalist who translates crime fiction on the side. Or did. Or did. Until he couldn't find a non-obscene non German equivalent for she crossed her legs and got fired. Stop snapping that button. It was the dinner where I met the actress. What actress? Isabelle Huppert. 
I thought I told you. You met Isabel Huber. Or sat across from her anyway. And? Weird chick. What? Real thick white makeup, like a doll, and four red tears on one cheek. Stage makeup. She must have come from the theater. And she ate mostly salt. Salt. This poor waiter serves her dinner, gives it a big shake of salt, starts to leave the table, then she waves him back. He pours more salt, then, I guess it's her husband, takes the shaker, pours salt all over. Finally, she grabs it herself. No let up on eating. Fork in one hand, salt in the other. She finishes the plate without lifting her head. Stress. Her husband winks at me as if to say, what a treasure. <laughs> Do you wink back? I told him that proverb Han told me. Who's Han? Ken's girlfriend. Oh, the Chinese one. You marry a chicken, you follow a chicken, she says. You said, follow a chicken, to Isabel Hubert's husband. <laughs> it's more nuanced in Chinese. I suppose. Dave always says, why go to these parties if you don't like the people? But it's not that I don't like the people. Dave's not into celebrities. True but he did get obsessed with that guy from his high school. Who wasn't even famous. Just outed for doing a job no one else can imagine doing. Fuck. Change of subject. What's it like, do you think, being salt and having Isabelle Huppert come down on you with her big red lips? <laughs> You're in a weird mood. <laughs> did Dave tell you about when he went to that guy's house? You know I went with him. You're kidding. We were just driving around one night. And? When Dave's idea to knock on the guy's door, it being Christmas Eve. What's Christmas Eve got to do with it? Nothing, really, but Dave says, well, I went to high school with him, what the heck? So we knock, the guy comes to the door in a sweater, and one look at his face, I'm thinking, this is a bad idea. Dave whispers, pretend we're carolers, but neither of us can sing. The guy offers us a 20. You take it. We have no basket or anything, so he puts it in his back in his pants, not suspicious yet, just kind of sunk in himself, and all of a sudden he says, you gotta be tougher, you want money, you don't want money, say so. And his voice is just, is a shock. Why? Maybe it was the Christmas thing. Guy had this Christmas music on inside. His voice made me want to cry, I don't know why. Dave does get you into things. And I said to him after we were in the car again, I said, you're still curious, aren't you? And? And he admits he's interested to see how the guy did his tree. Shit. But then, just after Christmas, he gets a call from the guy, or could have been his manager. Torturers don't have managers. No, well, who knows? But they want to make a movie about his life, a documentary, these two women from L.A. Movie of Dave's life. No, the torturers. But he s didn't recognize Dave at the door, you said. Not at the time. He took you for idiots panhandling. I guess it came to him later. So Dave's in the movie. I doubt he'll do it. You doubt he'll do it. But I bet he's curious. Dave's always curious. Concept is, these two women from LA want Dave to be the interviewer. Talk to the guy, reminisce about high school, see where it goes. Dave couldn't interview a block of cheese. My view, exactly. But that's what we thought about Darley, and then she joined the army. You mean, we thought it a poor choice. Yes. But she turned out to be fully capable. And happy enough from what I hear. Still, I can't imagine Dave in a movie. I can't imagine Dave as an interviewer. Dave says the guy is retired now. As if that makes sense, as if you can retire from torture. <laughs> it's very physical work, Dave says. I can hear him say that. In his next slide, please, voice. First thing you know, he'll be bringing the guy to the clinic for treatment. Don't say that. Buster. You want to sit closer to the bathroom? Where? Closer to the bathroom. Where is it? Over there. No. I thought I'd ask. Hmm? Because sometimes you don't go at all. Hmm. Do you? Do I what? Go at all. No, I don't need to go. You know you can tilt your chair back. What? Your chair. I think it's the kind that tilts back. Ah. Does it go anymore? Go where? 
No further back. No. Getting hungry yet? I know I'm getting hungry. No, not yet. I brought snacks. Anyway, say, you know what they want for a can of salmon? What? Can of salmon in that place, that quickie mart, beside Louise's? What? Four ninety-nine. Why are you whispering? <laughs> oh, good. Here's the waiter. Yes, please. Diet Sprite. Thanks. No, he'll have some of mine because you know I spilled some of mine before. I spilled some of mine last time around. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> Not bad, Diet Sprite. What do you think? Not bad. Well, I bet Buster and Louise are catching on to her by now. So they going to sell the condo? Some of them don't like it. You know, that condo isn't next to a beach or anything. Who bought there first? Louise? Louise, yes. They were on the 16th, she was on the 10th. Oh look, a lot of cows. What? A lot of cows. Where? Out the window. Mm. Must be hard to paint. Cows? Sunset, to make it look different from sunrise. Never thought of that. Well, you could ask Buster. Doesn't he paint? Houses. Still, paint is paint. I guess. He did a grand job on that screened-in porch for Dave. Did he? Creme brulee, I believe. Really? The color. Well, Dave's got the money, why not? You think? Insurance paid out a bundle after the fires, sure. Pass me that diet Sprite, will you? Should have got two. They're making them smaller these days. Cans look the same size, that's the trick of it. Who do you think they're fooling? <coughs> Buster wrote a letter to them once. Who? Diet Sprite. Why? Saying, who do you think you're fooling? <laughs> And? No answer. I've never seen Buster drinking pop. No, he doesn't like pop. So why write a letter? Question of principle, he said. That Buster. <laughs> no. Old words make me sad. Like what? Car hop. I've never said car hop in my life. Me neither. A vanished word, a vanished time. What about cardigan? My aunt wore cardigans. My aunt Nell, and she was sad. There you go. Or not sad, but kind of dusky. She always showed up at our house at dusk with her mysterious yellow luggage and sat on the couch. Why? You mean why on the couch? Yes. So she could teach me the sleeper hold. What's the sleeper hold? You can totally paralyze your enemy with the sleeper hold. Show me how to do it. She also taught me the word confidential. <laughs> Wasn't that a magazine? <laughs> when I see the word confidential, even now, a whole atmosphere like a Humphrey Bogart movie comes out around it. Just put your lips together and blow. Good whistler too. Very tall, never married, but then one day she wasn't around anymore. Wasn't around anymore. Stop visiting. Maybe she died. It got all very hush hush. You know how they whisper together in the kitchen and suddenly stop when you come in. The family shadow. No one ever said. Aunts have a longitude. A solitude. Yes. Unlike uncles. Uncles come in groups. My uncles, I remember, always grouped around the stove on winter nights, passing the whiskey, watching the fire. Storytellers, were they? Actually, no. They were mostly silent, big silent men, side by side, sort of rustling. Not much talk. I wonder, are we better off with all our talk? Any stories they had were stories about snow. The snow was mythic in those days. And I remember that icy path from the kitchen to the outhouse. No one on it. Snow on it. Mother of God spotless in the moonlight. Every kid deserves a snowy childhood. Show me the sleeper hold. I can. Uh, she never got around to it. Ah. I didn't know how to ask for things. That's the whole trick, isn't it? No one knew how to ask each other anything. Families are a mystery. Shot of whiskey for the boy. Not much else ever said. You often mention the outhouse. Why is that? No, I don't. Yes, you do. Some Freudian thing is what you're implying. Not implying. I merely wonder why you always mention the outhouse. 
Was it a two-seater? Ours was a two-seater, yes. So you could sit and shit alongside somebody else? Theoretically. <laughs> Did you do that? Never, if I could help it. You preferred to be alone? I went there to read. Lots of reading material in the outhouse. Usually newspapers, but I took my book with me. I can just see you heading down the path with a volume of Proust under each arm. I hated it, but those were happy days. Golden age. It burned down the summer of the fires. You crazy fuck, don't look so sad. She never got around to it. Why do you think that was? Is it important? Yes. So, maybe that's what she was. What? A person to push you through the surface of things. I'm going to ask Dave. Ask Dave about your aunt Nell. No, the sleeper hole. He's a medical man. He may know it. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Say, do you keep a journal? Yes. Why? Different reasons. Like? Like remembering names, or for practice, or just the light is so remarkable some days I have to put it away. Put what away? The light. Put it away means... Stop it bothering me. What kind of light would that be? To use your phrase, it pushes me through the surface. Only light can push you. I screen out the rest. Dave says that guy kept a journal. I gather inventories of light weren't his main event. I don't want to talk about this. Mr. Matt Talbot liked to record materials and durations. I don't want to know his name. Dave says they're using a few pages of it in the documentary. Not interested. Oh, don't be a coward. Language is a curse. <clears throat> Are you quoting Beckett? Sort of. <laughs> you know his recurring <laughs> stage attraction? <laughs> You know his recurring stage direction? Brief laugh. Laughing in Beckett is never funny. <laughs> I find him hilarious. Do you? Yes. And what about Mr. Matt Talbot? Is he a funny guy? He says things like, I was trained to do what I do in accordance with my training. That's autology. Not quite, but an extinction. You see how language betrays us. Silence betrays us more. I'm not trying to keep secret from you something. I know, it's just what I don't know, the way I come to terms with the abyss of what I don't know. Overworked concept, the abyss. I'm, I'm going swimming. See you later. Okay. What are you staring at? The shadow of your hands on the table. It looks like... Celery. Fear. <laughs> well, there we are then. There we are then. My Aunt Nell was like a long piece of wood, dressed in cardigans and bangs. She would use a word like, a word like, which still retains the duskiness of her, and there were gifts hidden somewhere in her mysterious yellow luggage, but I had to watch her unpack everything else first. Aunt Nell knew the sleeper hold. She sat on the couch. I sat right close behind her. You can totally paralyze an enemy with the sleeper hold, she told me. Then she always postponed showing it to me till next time. Nell did not marry. Some great shame overtook her life. I heard going to court, the child, the beach, in sentences that stopped when I came into the room, and I never asked how she died. Richard, students tuck their shirts in, tuck them out on the way to the podium, some run, some take the stairs two at a time, or grin or duck the head or wear a black armband because, I assume, we are at war, or she sprained her elbow. Richard is the luminary invited here today to give out prizes. Then he adjusts the microphone. A fastidious icon inducts me, he begins. I write this down. Although flesh calls to ponder while he talks, he is deeply unhappy. 
No one reads anymore, especially long books, or has long conversations, or more important, knows how to break off a long conversation. Fear of boredom and national disease among our youth. Nonetheless, nonetheless, next year he plans to publish by extracting all the best bits of Proust, a very short volume called Charlus, and turning my program over, I copy his closing. Almost shy, reference to Lady M's secret pleasure in maintaining somewhere on her body a scab. Alda. So, the other morning, I take Alda to a movie. Morning movies are weird. And there's Alda, feeling sorry for the veins of the leaves weighed down by daylight. You know Alda. Her empathy. Is that what it is? And her being crazy. Or her having born five children in six years and been forcibly sterilized. Anyway, this movie has revelers carrying on like mole flanders at a long table with flagons of wine and decolletage. And afterwards, out on the street again, these same women show up. What same women? On a bridge tied to a sort of wooden pallet. Why? Receiving punishment. This is you talking or Alda? Lambs, says Alda. Lambs crumble in day hands. I ask to know more. She says she hates me. I walk her back to the home. Outings are good for her, supposedly. Her sliding on to me, though, her whole way of sliding on to me is a worry. Her movie is a worry.